Right. Um, Good afternoon, everyone? everybody. I think so, Chairman. Yeah. Everybody that's arriving today anyway. Well, good um, afternoon, everyone, and welcome. OK, so welcome to Sedgemoor District Council's uh, Grants Award Subcommittee. Uh, it's being held as an advisory meeting and we'll make ref recommendations to support the leader of council to take the final decision in line with powers vested to the leader in the constitution, as the Grants Award Subcommittee is a subcommittee of the executive. It's all the legal stuff done. For each application, I will ask members to propose and recommend a course of action, and these will be sent to the Leader of Council for his determination. Sorry. I've got oh, thank you very much. Up. I was reading on the screen. Yes, I know. We need to take the transcript off. Um, all members of the committee should have their video on, um, um, but will remain muted until the chairman invites them to speak. All members of the press and public will remain muted unless they have registered to speak and the chairman will let them know when they can make their presentation. The format of the meeting will be as per the agenda published and the chairman will now ask everyone to confirm that they can see and hear everything. Thank you, Leila. Uh, I, I don't know if your screens are the same as mine going around clockwise. So. Uh, all I can do is, um, Councillor Brian Bolt, can you see and hear the proceedings? Yes, I can. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Charlie Riches. Yes, good afternoon, Chair and members and, ev and everybody else. I can see and hear you all. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Alan Matthews. Yes, I'm Alan Matthews. I can confirm that I can see and hear everything. Councillor uh, Graham Godwin Pearson. Good afternoon. I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Uh, and now the, the officers, um, Leila has confirmed already that you can hear. Our solicitor, Dorothy Farrell, can you hear everything? Yes, thank you, Chair. I can hear and see everything. Thank you. Our administrator and officer of this committee is Shannon. Um, can you confirm you can see and hear us? I can confirm I can see and hear everything. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, to the visitors we have, it's very good to, to see you. Um, could you just wave your hands if you can't hear what we can say, but if everything's all right, that's it. Uh, we have another one of our officers, um, Steve Taylor, in the background as a, as a backup. And uh, Annie Griffin, can you see and hear? Yes, I can see and hear both me and Shannon. We're just sitting in and listening, seeing how Shannon Lewis, there's two Shannons in the meeting, just seeing how the meetings like go because we've just joined the team and we might be taking over some sort of responsibility to help Shannon in the future. Thank you and you're very welcome indeed. Perhaps we can have a chat out of the committee at a later stage. Okay, perfect, thank you. Now, uh, to start the meeting proper now, first of all, do we have any apologies for absence? Thank you, Chairman. We've received apologies from councillors Liz Perry and Lee Redman. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the next item are the minutes of previous meetings. The first one on the, 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 the agenda pack is the previous meeting on the 3rd of August. And the next one after that um, on the pack is the, the earlier meeting on the 13th of July. Um, do any members disagree with the accuracy of those minutes? No, thank you. And since I am not aware of any of the actions recommended not being carried out, we move forward to the actual requests and projects. And the next one is urgent business. We have not been advised of any. The public speaking time that those members um, are guests who are speaking on behalf of an application uh, that will be done as your application is heard on the list rather than now. Members of Council, do you have any declarations of interest? No, thank you. And now it is item number six, and these are the projects themselves. I'm going down this. 
of all the projects we've got, there are only, um, we've only got three speakers speaking on behalf of those. So the first one on my list, uh, getting to it, I'm scrolling down page after page. The first application is Benji. So Shannon, would you present the detail of this application, please? Thank you, Chair. So Appendix A is an individual grant for Benjamin Kingston, an 11 year old who was successfully auditioned and been offered a place at the specialist boys class um, at the Royal Ballet School in Covent Garden, London. And his mum and dad obviously put the application in and his mum's here to speak. So I pass it over to her. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. So, Mrs. Kingston, it's such a so good news here. Would you care to to speak to the application, the what it means, and how your family and Benji are going to cope with what appears to be a very very highly committed next few years. Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Philippa Kingston, and I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about my son, Benjamin. Benji has always loved dancing, and we took him to his first official dance class when he was just six years old. It was a boys street dance class, but when he came out, the teacher came straight up to us and said, you have got to bring him to ballet class. I have to say, we've never looked back. He has taken weekly dance classes at Fox King Dance Academy in King's Square in Bridgewater ever since. And then two years ago, it was recommended that he auditioned for the Royal Ballet School. We're thrilled to say that he auditioned successfully and was given a place on their junior associate scheme. That means that for the last two years, we've taken him down to Totnes in Devon every Saturday for a two and a half hour class and he has absolutely loved it. But junior associates finished for Benji just before the summer, he became too old, and uh, they asked him to audition for the mid associates, the next stage on. And yes, we're thrilled to say that not only was he given a place at the mid associates, but he has also been asked to go to the specialist male training. But that means he now goes every Saturday to Covent Garden in London, for a three hour male specialist class. We started three weeks ago, so he's had three lessons and he is loving it, absolutely loving it. We are extremely proud of Benji, not just because he is a boy who does ballet, but also he evidently has some talent for it, but the commitment and the focus that he shows as an 11 year old boy is quite commendable and he does have to be committed. It is an 11 hour day. Every Saturday we leave the house at 8.30 in the morning. He does his homework on the train. He then does a three hour dance class and then he does more homework on the train home. We don't get back till half seven in the evening. But he wants to do it. He is sacrificing social events, but because he wants to be there. And as a parent, we are incredibly proud of that commitment. But of course, not only is it the time commitment, both for Benj and for us as his parents, we have to accompany him on these days, but the cost is not insignificant. Financially, we are obviously having to pay for the lesson fees, for his uniform, and now the travel costs as well. And potentially, this could be for the next three years. And that is why we've applied for this grant. We will take Benji every week. He will not miss out on this amazing opportunity. But if you could find the way to fund us in any way for this experience, we would be extremely grateful for anything you'd be prepared to give. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much for our presentation. Members, you've heard a really uplifting story um, Graham, you, you got your hand up. What a marvellous young man Benji seems to be and, and I commend you on your commitment. 
uh, to helping him pursue this dream. It's it's absolutely incredible. We've all seen Billy Elliot. So, <laughs> you know, how wonderful to have a summer, a homegrown Billy Elliot story. Um, I, I, actually, I just had a, a, a query because I think there might be a typo on the uh, grants back. £25 percent of travel costs. It seems it can't be both pounds and percent. So um, I wondered if someone could uh, clarify that. Um, Paige? Hey, other funding, it says page page four. page four. Um, not that it matters an awful lot. I think it's very well worth supporting. Yeah. Um, and actually travel costs to and from 30 lots of travel from Bridgewater to London and back for two people for so that's what I said, 76 pounds, so about 100 quid a time if it's 25 percent funding. It's not that's not bad at all. So it <laughs> must be getting a season ticket. That sounds like a bargain. That's we cool. we have bought a, a, a child rail card, obviously, to help with the cost of that. And yes, the Royal Ballet School, we applied to them for a travel bursary. Yeah. And they have off, they've been very kind. They have given us the bursary in as much as they are able to give. They've given us £581.25 to cover, um, to go towards the travel costs. We will be given 50% of that in January 2022. And the other 50% of it we will be given in August 2022. Those uh, that exact figure has only been given to us in the last couple of weeks. So I didn't have that when we submitted the application. Thank you. Graham, does that answer your question? It, it does. I know how expensive this sort of stuff is. My my, my six year old does ballet and uh, all the leotards and everything are so expensive, aren't they? Um, I, if nobody else has any other queries, I, I, I propose that we fund this. Thank you. Um, Shannon, I saw your hand go up. Did you want to say something? Um, I was just going to confirm it was supposed to be twenty five percent, not twenty five pounds. So that was my that was my error. So I'm very sorry on that one. Uh, there is a visitor in the lobby. Um, is this someone we expect as part of this meeting? Sorry, Chairman. Um, no, I was just asking uh, Mr. Taylor if he could find out who it is. Um, we haven't got Councillor Costello, I just noticed. She's not She's not here. So I'm just wondering whether she's. it's her that's come through. Okay. But no, I haven't, haven't been told of anybody else coming through. So I'll leave it. Uh, Brian, your hand is up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'd, I'd like this <laughs> to second that. I wish we could give more. Uh, I agree, it's a truly uplifting story. The, um, so the proposal is to give Benji the £500 towards his training costs. This has been proposed by um, Graham Gordon Pearson, seconded by Brian Bolt. May I have a show of hands from all members that um, who agree? That looks to be unanimous. Uh, Graham, uh, was that a, um, a legacy hand? Uh, no, I was just raising my hand to support it. Thank you very much. So, Mrs Kingston, we are we are delighted to be able to offer Benji £500. Thank uh, will you, you so keep much. us informed of his progress? I will, of course. Yes, thank you so much for your support. That's much, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for visiting us. Um, if you if you would like to stay, you're very welcome to. You don't have to go now. I will stay. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't know the answer to that at the moment. Uh, the next one on our list, the application is from What's for this, Luke? Jack Dawes Educational Trust. Um, Shannon? Thank you, Chair. So Jack Dawes Educational Trust is Appendix B. Unfortunately, they're unable to attend the meeting today. Um, Jack Dawes is a small charity dedicated to increasing the access and participation in arts, music and active innovative, innovative projects. They've had a long history of delivering successful long scale projects and have been in operation for over 28 years. They have a three tiered program which includes weekend courses. There is a youth and community program which was delivered in the last academic year through a blended approach despite COVID. 
They have worked with over 1,000 children aged between 8 to 17, developing transferable skills and active participation through music and the arts. Um, one second. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, members um, and so a Jack Law's representative here. No, uh, we, th there is no visitor to talk to this one. So, uh, members, are there any questions you would like to ask about the detail? This oh, Charlie. Yes, um, can we have a little bit more detail about actually what the project is going to do and where it is going to be and who it involves? Um, it, it, it talks about producing an opera, but the I can't quite work out where that's going to be. I mean, they're only looking for... The, the the venue cost is only 185 pounds. I, I can't quite work out, you know, where would you put an opera on for 185 pounds? Um, thank you for your comment. Unfortunately, um, we don't have that information at the moment. However, I can go back and find out some more information in terms of where they are going to be delivering this. Um, in the the project description box, there is the it does, Lower School. Yeah, it does say about the um, the new school in Bower that has just been um, recently built. That I know they're going to be doing some work in. Um, uh, you are um, confident that it will all be in Sedgemoor. Yeah, I am confident that it's going to be um, in Sedgemoor um, for definite. But I, again, I'm not sure in terms of the specifics. I, obviously, I know there is, you know, the, the new one. But in terms of any other schools, I, I cannot clarify that at the moment. But like I said, I'm more than happy to go back and get some more information in terms of other schools, if that's what you're wanting. Before we ask that, um, other members, have you any comments? Because you've seen the... The, the, co the list of project costs, and some of them are eye-watering, but um, looking at what they wish to do, for instance, taking an established classical work and reformatting it so that the Barbara of Seville becomes the best hairdresser in Somerset, um, for young people to do that is truly a remarkable feat. Um, members, please help me out here. Is anyone uneasy with the um, question that Charlie has raised? I think, Chair, if I can comment, I'd be supportive for the project. It, it, it was just a bit lacking in detail. That that's all. I'm not. I'm not questioning the the, the, the benefits. If, if that's so, you know, I, I would say that here and now. Or the or the probity of it. No, not at all. Um, not at all. Uh, Julie, um, Lena would like to add something. Um, may I bring her in before you? Thank Sorry, you. Chairman. I was actually I was actually trying to attract your attention to Councillor Cordner, but she's put her hand up now as well. <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> Julie, would you like to? to comment yes but i'm hoping you can hear me because i'm yes on my phone um i think this seems like a wonderful project i mean i agree with charlie that there's a few kind of gray areas but it does seem like an amazing thing that they want to do um especially if it's in the new school in bower um you know it'd be a good thing for that school uh to have something like that so i and i think this is just the kind of project you know that the and I missed the one before as well with the the ballet, which I absolutely would have supported. I think these are the kind of projects that you know we want to be supporting. I agree with you entirely. Thank you. If no one has any doubts as to this, then in that case, oh, Julie, your hand is still up. Do you want to continue, uh, Graham? Well, yeah, yes, I, it's just a, it was just a quickie, really. I, I see that Jack Dawes is based in Froome. Uh, so to what extent do, do they seek funding from 
uh, the the uh, well, is it is it is it um, part of is it part of Mendit District Council over there? Um, and to what extent do they seek funding from their local council? And to what extent do they seek funding from the council where the uh, opera is going to be performed? Shannon, have you um, been able to explore those things? It, Sorry, it, it does, no, does it really matter? Um, as far as our solicitor is concerned, does it really matter where the the generation of the idea comes from, provided that the money is spent within Sedgemoor? I think what you said is absolutely correct in that the money must be spent within Sedgemoor. That's the criteria you are concerned with. Right. Okay, with that proviso, and if that could be added to, oh, Leila. Sorry, Chairman. Um, I was just going to say they have actually made an application to Bridgewater. Well, they said Bridgewater Council, so I presume that's the town council. Town, town council. Um, so that's listed as one of the pending uh, yes. fund applications. So. I, I, I am personally assured that this is a, a good application and does meet the criteria. And I am confident that all monies that they are given will be spent here. But And on that proviso, may I have a proposer? Charlie, Charlie, you're proposing we... Yeah, I'm very happy to, to, to propose this. I, I, yeah, as I say, if particularly if it's at a new school and gives, you know, gives them an opportunity yes. to kickstart activities for special educational needs there. Excellent. Mm -hmm. £1,500. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Julie. Julie has seconded that. Now, this has been properly proposed and seconded. Members, will you show hands that you will agree this? That That's looks unanimous. unanimous. Thank you all very much. My, our next one is... The Parish Church Council of St Peter's and All Hallows in West Huntsbill. And we are very happy to welcome Sarah Paddy, who is going to speak to that. Um, but uh, Shannon, first of all, will you present it? Thank you, Chair. Um, so Appendix C is Procural Church Council of St Peter's and All Hallows. They're a parish church of a rural community in West Huntsville. They would like to use the space as a community social meeting place. A pop-up calf was started and it has proven to be successful and other events are held in the building but use is restricted due to lack of toilet facilities and as you previously said chair um, we do have Sarah Puddy here to obviously speak today. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, would, would you like to um, comment on the detail of your presentation? I can't hear you, you're muted. Sorry. That's Sorry, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, yeah, back in 2017, we carried out a village questionnaire, an open day in the church to ask people what they wanted from their church. Um, and the overall Wellman Resort was a community meeting place um, due to a lot of rural isolation in the village and loneliness. Um, um, this is why we're, we're trying to combat that. Um, a pop-up cafe was then started in 2018, which is just a once a week um, cafe in, in the, the back of the church, but with no facilities. Um, so basically everything has to be brought in from tables and chairs to, to cattle and everything else. Um, now we'd now like to actually turn the west half of the church into a proper community building and put in proper facilities of toilets, which I desperately needed, and a small kitchen servery area for, for um, coffees, teas and very light refreshments. Um, this in, includes removing some of the pews, which we do have permission to do, still leaving the pews in the other half of the church, um, but it will all also mean reflooring and, and everything else, because obviously once the pews go out, there's quite a bit of disruption. Um, yes, yeah, so it will be a community cafe. It will be open during daylight hours, which is when the church is open. It will be manned by volunteers as much as possible, um, but it will be an honesty cafe when there are no volunteers available. 
Um, we also want to provide IT facilities um, and volunteers. Um, to, we were trained volunteers um, via DigiLinks or someone who used to work for DigiLinks has offered to train our volunteers um, to help people with IT because that was also identified in our questionnaire as a problem. People don't have the internet. Um, we will incorporate a, a children's and young people's area with craft activities and display boards for local groups. This came from the local groups. Um, they don't have anywhere to display their work. The art group and the camera club and the history group, um, they like displays up for a, a week or so. And in normal church halls or village halls, they can't do that because of other bookings. Uh, we're working with preschool and the school um, and they would also like to be involved and come to the church for project work. Um, U3A in Burnham, we're working with them. They would like to use the church as a base for walking groups because we've got the footpaths up to the um, English coastal path along the Parrot Estuary. Um, Highbridge and, and uh, Huntsville Scouts um, would also like to use it as well as a base because they don't have any outside area in their Highbridge Scout hut, um, not a big outside area anyway, to do badge work. Uh, we're, we're in um, consultation with the Community Council of Sedgemoor and uh, Community Council of Somerset, sorry, and Sedgemoor Village Agents who um, say they're happy to visit our community cafe once it's up and running. Um, there has been a comment about the Balliol Hall. Um, this is a very much well used hall in, in, in West Huntsville, but it doesn't have um, a cafe facility in it. And it is regular bookings like for table tennis and bowls and things like that. We don't want to take away from the, the Balliol Hall. We want to keep that running as it is very successfully. We just want to complement it and provide a, a cafe facility for people to drop in and have a chat and make friends and socialise, really. So that's where we are. Um, the whole project is going to cost um, £235,200, but we, as a list of places of worship, we can claim our VAT back. So that takes it back to £196,000. we have secured the funding so far, £54,300. And um, we've also raised 20,000 ourselves, so that's 74,300. We have other grant applications out for the remainder of the funding, as well as the grant application to yourself. So thank you very much for considering us. Thank you very much for that detail. Uh, members, you've had a chance to, to read this and to listen to Sarah. Uh, are there any comments or questions that you would like to ask of Sarah? Graham. Thank, thank you, Chair. I, I mean, it's the same in the villages around where I am, um, Sarah, that, that uh, there's there's a lot of loneliness and isolation and the communities need somewhere really to, to, to congregate. My, I, I sort of had two questions, really. One of them is, does the church have a church hall near to it? Is no. There near to it? no, it's just the Balliol Hall. That's, which is is that the, bit down the road, is it? That's the community hall. Okay. Um, and um, we do, that's got a lot of regular bookings, like for table tennis and bowls and keep fit and things like that. Um, it's not got the facility to provide a, a community cafe with a, just a drop in for a cup of coffee. Um, we don't want to we don't want to take away from them we don't want to take any bookings away from them at all um we want them to run successfully and one of our um parochial church council members actually sits on their committee um so we have good links with them um and um we we are we want to provide what they can't provide um which is a, a cafe um for people to drop in and have a chat and let their children play and you know ju just general things OK, OK, thank you. So, 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 so I have two two follow up questions, both both very short ones. Yeah, I hope that's OK. The first is um, converting a church seems quite quite a lot of quite a lot of work. And uh, it, it, for, for, for that much money, is it is it, you know, have you considered building something in the grounds that can serve those purposes without actually getting involved in the structure of the church itself? And the second part of that is, do the worship community of the church, do they, do they feel that converting part of it into a cafe will take away from any of the any any of the um, you know the quality of the church as a spiritual place of worship? If you know what I mean. Right. If I could take the second part first, um, no, um, the the church community are completely with us. It's a very large church. 
um, and the the front half or the east half of the church is not being touched at all. Um, it, it is a major, it is a very large building um, and the back of the church which we are converting will still be available for any very large funerals or very large weddings um, and that the church community we are all the church community that are doing this. We are we are completely with it. And we realise that the building needs to be used. Um, churches are, are traditionally used on Sundays. And actually, we have this big building there um, available to the community that should be used every single day of the week, not just on Sundays for a very small, well, very small, about 25 people who, who are regular worshippers. Um, so it does need to be used and, and, you know, it's an incredibly beautiful building built, you know, first, first building there was in the 1100s and everyone should have the opportunity to come into it and see it and, and enjoy it, not just for worship. Um, the second one about building in the churchyard, that has problems um, in that um, there are a lot of graves in the churchyard, um, although the, at the front of the churchyard there are no marked graves but there are graves there um, so building on them is um, very difficult. Um, part of this cost is the um, drainage and connection to the sewage um, and that those costs are high because the mm -hmm. church will insist upon a um, uh, it being supervised by an archaeologist because um, we could come across remains um, so I don't think building in the churchyard is 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 at all possible. Um, even if the cost was less, it, it's just not feasible because there are so many remains there. And there's also a lot of trees that, you know, ancient trees that, that have got preservation orders on them that have been there for years. So um, likewise, you know, we can't cut any, we wouldn't want to cut any of those down. Uh, and we couldn't cut any of those down. So um, that, would, that would also cause a few problems. Thank you. I, I am Graham. I'm familiar with the church, and what Sarah says is absolutely right. Um, I, I believe the churchyard actually is, is full unless someone has got a reserved family plot. Uh, Julie, you had your hand up. Yes, I'm muted. You're muted. muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, I think it's a lovely idea and um, I agree that, um, you know, churches, you know, it's great if you can use them as a social space and I love what you said about IT, helping people in the community who, you know, don't have those skills to open up. Um, I'm probably totally ignorant, but was there, there was an application some time ago for a church and is there another different fund as well for churches? I'm probably I might be able to help there. you out there, Julie. Uh, before COVID, the Village Hall Fund uh, supported an improvement to the Balliol Hall, which is adjacent oh, to the church. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, no, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's good application and I would support it, definitely. Thank you. As a matter of, um, purely as a matter of interest, uh, as Sarah says, it should be used every day of the week. In fact, this is turning the church round full circle to when it was first built, it was the focal point of the community. The church provided housing, food and shelter to those who needed it. And that included company and even it probably also had um, a hospital at her, um, a healer. So in every way, I, I believe this fulfills every single criteria for a place of religious worship, but community as well, regardless of the direction of one's faith. So if everyone is happy with the detail of this, may I have a proposal? So they be £2,500. Julie, propose. I'm happy to second from the chair. So now it has been proposed and seconded. Will please everyone please indicate that they agree two thousand five hundred pounds? This appears to be that's unanimous, I believe. Thank you all very much. Um, would you please keep us informed of how progress goes on?
Yes. And when you're open, will you invite us, please? Yes, yes, we certainly will. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. You don't have to leave if you would like. If you're interested in the following um, applications, you're very welcome to remain. OK, thank you. Thanks. Now, the next one on the list, that was St. Peter's. It's coming down soon. Love Community, which is a community interest company. Shannon, if you could give the detail, please. There's no speaker for that one. So there is a speaker chair, sorry. Um, but I will I will so introduce. Oh yes, you. Alex. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> um, thank you, Chair, for introducing me. So Appendix D is Love Community CIC. It is an organization that represents a range of community-based initiatives. They aim to support activities that will benefit whole communities with the intention of reducing socialization so sorry social isolation, increasing community engagement, health and well-being and lots more. Um, before I pass it over, there's just something to note for the, the members and yourself, Chair. Um, I have presented the figures in two ways, as it would be down to, you know, down to you guys to decide which way you go forth. One of them is the project costs with in-kind added, and one of them is project costs without in-kind added. Um, and Dorothy from Legal will explain now in terms of the criteria of where that hits. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Could you go over the legal aspects of this, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Purely for clarification, the grants criteria don't authorise contributions in kind as being permitted. So whilst the criteria is silent on um, contributions in kind, the grants criteria require a minimum of 10% financial contribution to be made in any event. So under the existing criteria, there is no ability to consider in kind contributions. Thank you. Thank you. And because of that, the the sum applied for is the the, the lesser sum that Shannon has underlined here is one thousand two hundred and thirty eight pounds fifty. Now we are very happy to welcome um, a speaker. To this, um, Mr. Rowland, uh, would you like to enlarge on this application, please? Hello, Chair. Hello, Councillors. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Um, yeah, um, I work with uh, mostly uh, people with learning disabilities in the Sedgemoor area. Um, previously, we've run pop-up digital hubs, uh, just like it's being proposed at the church. Um, what we're hoping to do with the money is we very much like to form a... Um, we're basing it in the hub in the top of Angel Place in Bridgewater, which is an existing facility. Um, we want to start a, uh, a club for people with learning disabilities and all types of neurodiversity. So whether that's things like acquired brain injury, mental health conditions um, or, say, learning disability or autism. We're using gaming to bring people together. Uh, we believe that video gaming is a great way for people to connect. And especially given all the issues we've had over lockdown, uh, we've all seen how vital it is to stay in touch and the fact that we're all communicating right now through uh, a digital medium just shows how powerful it is and how useful it is. I believe we can use gaming to bring people together to establish real world relationships. Many of the skills that people learn when gaming are transferable, they're real world skills, so things like planning, problem solving, um, social skills, all those things that um, many of the people in our community, so people with autism and neurodiversity, they often struggle with those very, um, those real soft sort of social skills. Uh, we are hoping to use the money to pay mostly for the rent uh, at the hub and also to buy some equipment, so actual gaming consoles to bring people together. We've got quite a lot of experience, as I say, previously of running groups like this. Um, as I said, we, we did it before around yeah, helping people with digital skills um, purely based around the Internet. Mm -hmm. We're still going to be using a lot of those skills. It's just we're using gaming as the conduit to bring people together. And we think it's a really uh, powerful way to do that. We've got great connections with a lot of the people in the learning disability communities and a lot of the day services. 
and we believe that we'll be able to provide a, a good uh, base for people to come together. So thank you very much. Thank you, that's very clear. Members, do you have any questions you would like to ask Mr. Rowland about the, the detail of this? Graham. Thank you, Chair, and, and, and thank you, Mr. Rowland. It's, it seems like an extremely worthwhile cause. Just a few details I, I, that I can't see in the application I wanted to know. Um, the uh, project costs include two games consoles. I'm assuming that's one times Xbox. I'm not up on my games console. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, one, uh, an, one X, an, an Xbox and a Nintendo Switch. Um, that, I mean, but presumably that means only two youngsters at any one time will um, be able to engage with that. So, so how, what's what's how many people do you expect to have there really during these sessions? And then, secondly, one of the things that we often look at at the grants committee is is sort of how many people in the local community this will affect how many people in, in, for whom their lives will be improved what's the what's the um reach as it were thank you so um yeah i mean in theory in theory although it seems like we'd only have two consoles on the go um with the sort of games that we're looking at there'd be you know we have people watching i don't know if you're aware but um a lot of people now uh, stream their game playing and it's watched by thousands of people. So, uh, so although you'd think, oh, it's just a couple of people playing, it's actually a lot of the people who would be there would be watching, we'd be doing uh, multiplayer games, you know, so people get that kind of like sharing, that sort of um, switching between people. So it kind of, it's actually much more than just two, two people at any one time, although physically, yeah, there are just two people playing. We envisage probably about 15 to 20 people uh, would be their maximum, but we're talking about people kind of being there, some people drinking tea, some people chatting. You know, we've, we very much love the idea of like a, almost like a community living room where people can just come and yeah, make those connections. Um, I think, yeah, uh, Sorry, um, was there another that, that you were asking about the, the the amount of games consoles and the number of people? Um, was there was there? Sorry, did, did I miss something else there? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, just just sort of what the what the reach is, what's yeah. what's the size of the uh, expected participating audience? If you so, sort of, how many well, people will be engaged in total? Certainly. So. I mean, we have a big reach. We have over 1,500 people that we connect with via social media um, that come to us through our pain. And we are also have really good connections with the learning disability spread throughout Somerset and the Southwest. Um, and we would hope that a lot of the, um, the, the privately funded day services and services that come, um, the statutory services like Discovery, we would hope that that would draw in many, many of those people. Sometimes with... Um, the people we work with, things like projects like this can be a little bit of a slow burner and they can take a little while for people to kind of realise that you're there and that you're going to be there every week and that you're not going anywhere. But I would I really hope that we would involve a large part of, of the, you know, the people who are interested and in um, receipt of services in this in, in the county, really. So um, I don't have a specific figure in mind, but. I, you know, I think we, we do know an awful lot of people throughout the area, and I think I think we could easily tap into several hundred people without without any problem at all. Thank you. Uh, just a matter of curiosity, Mr. Rowland, um, do you work with the engine room? And I do. The they have yes. Yes, yes, I do. I do. I I, I do a lot lot with the, those guys, and that yeah, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. And they they're, are. They're fantastic with the people that I support as well. So yes, yeah, they're great. Thank you. Members, any more questions, please? Charlie, yes. Thank you. Can I, M Mr. Rowland, can you, can you tell us a bit more about the people who um, you work with in, in love? I mean, I don't know whether they're volunteers or staff members or how, and, and presumably when you're working with young people, you, I guess you've got DAB checked people who will be there with them. Um, so, so uh, I think there's a little bit of, of uh, confusion here. I, I don't actually work with young people. I work with adults. So um, that's generally people over eight, eighteen. Um, but yes, I, I'm I'm all um, have my um, enhanced uh, DAB check. 
we, you know, I am, I am pretty much a one man band. I have people, um, some of the people that I work with um, w might, you know, will be coming along, people who I already support. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we will be able to get people to, who would become volunteers, but we are mainly encouraging people to bring their own support staff and care uh, support staff with them if they need that. So um, yeah, I'm hoping it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an issue. Thank you, Julie. You have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just wondering. So people are going to come to the hub, um, and there's going to be video game playing, and um, I guess they'll also be able to access other services if you know if that's that's what they need. And I was also a bit of a silly question, but. Will they be able to like, is, is there tea and coffee and stuff or, you know, will they be able to have a hot drink? Um, so we we've specifically aimed it on a on a Thursday, which is when a lot of the um, village agents and the community agents yeah. are there as well, and they're great for signposting services. My background mm. is as a learning disability support worker, so I'm mm. very used to kind of doing all of that stuff. You know, I, I'm very aware that we start off with gaming, but it it's actually kind of you know we we yeah. offer a myriad of services and support and all of that kind of thing. Um, and yes, there's there's certainly all the facilities on hand tea coffee as i say we, we, we it's it's really a bit of a sneaky way to kind of get people in through the gaming um but once of course once we've got our hooks into them then we can kind of really sort of you know make sure that everything's working well for them in their lives and all of that kind of stuff so it, it's very much uh yeah it's like a a, a gateway in um, I would just say, I, I, yeah, I apologise for the confusion around the funding, uh, 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 around what I put on the funding. I, the, the original cost of the project was, uh, I think, 5,000. And, and what I was trying to say was I was hoping to go for 2,500. I understand that's not, not come across in, in the way I've, I'm not used to doing funding proposals. So <laughs> I do apologise for that. Um, but yeah, that was just, I just wanted to clear up. I was hoping for two and a half thousand, but I quite understand that I may be uh, not going to get that because of the way I've worded it. But I just wanted to, to point that out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Verland. Uh, you you said you're one on band that raised a, a very tiny red flag. Have you in place any form of succession planning? Just supposing, for instance, you quite suddenly were seriously ill and could not continue what would happen to the project if you were not there? Um, so I'm hoping, as I said, I, I really do want to get some other people on board. I'm part of the uh, Somerset Micro Provider Network, and I do have uh, lots of other colleagues within that network who I work quite closely with. And what I would aim to do would be to get a couple of those people who I'm already involved with kind of uh, through mutual clients and to get them sort of so that they're coming along regularly. And so that at any point they could step in and kind of do what I do, which is literally coming in and, you know, opening up, um, getting people involved in it. So although I don't have a specific plan uh, right this second, it's certainly something that I would be looking at to to get in place and as I say I think once we get more people involved my experience with these projects is often people come along and then they're like oh I you know I really want to be part of this and that's the way that we will we will get them to sort of uh, step in and become regular attendees and hopefully yeah run it alongside because I'm, I'm very much I, I'm not precious over this as far as I'm concerned the more people who are involved uh, the better so yeah I'm, I'm really pleased to open up to other people as well. You're a natural born optimist. <laughs> uh, members, um, this last bit about the securing the continuation of the service and by that also securing the property of the amount of money that may be awarded. Members, do you have any further questions that you would like to ask either Dorothy or Mr. Rowland? Graham, yes. Thank, thank you, Chair. I, 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 did, I, did have, I did have one quick question, which is that um, the uh, buying a console isn't the end of the story in terms of uh, in terms of costs, because I, I, you need to also buy the software. Um, I understand that some of these uh, consoles do come with bundled software. So 
uh, my question is, are those bundle packs suitable for the intended audience? And secondly, you know, you're taking a, dom a domestic appliance and using it in the public, which means that presumably you're going to have to insure these things in case, you know, in case it gets broken or dropped or coffee spilled on it. And those, those, those costs don't appear. Um, no, I mean, there are quite obviously, as I say, I, I'm kind of willing to absorb a lot of those costs myself just because it's a project that I really believe in. Um, and I think, yeah, I accidents do happen. We would usually with um, many new um, electronic products, you often get there is a kind of insurance that you can buy that goes alongside it. And I'm more than happy to to make sure I get that included in it. Um, and also I do have my own personal, um, I have carers insurance that covers me for certain things. And I'm certainly gonna investigate um, making sure that anything, any uh, parts of kit or anything that I buy will be covered by that. And if not, then I'm, I'm gonna obviously get separate um, electronic device insurance to cover those items. Um, with regards to the bundled software and things, yeah, I. I'm hoping that we will, I'm hoping also that people bring along their own games to play as well. So we will start that off, but people will bring along their own things and their own favourites and, and we'll also get around it that way. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy, um, have you any um, comments on the this last part of the discussion? Sorry, no chair, I don't. Thank you. In which case, um, as has been explained, the amount of money being requested um, is £1,238.50. So may I have a proposer that this be granted to Love Community? Julie, uh, are you proposing this? Thank you. May I have a seconder? Graham. As formally proposed by Julie Cordner, seconded by Graham Godwin Pearson, may I have a show of hands that uh, you agree to £1,238.50? One, two, three, four. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Mr. Thank Roland, you. Uh, our administrator, Shannon, will be in touch with you of the ways and means of getting this forward and the, the following processes. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you wanted to stay on, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. That's very kind. Now, our next application is from Bees, Burnham's Excellent Entertainment Society. Uh, we don't have a speaker for them, but just before the meeting, they sent um, an additional statement, which um, uh, Shannon will read out to members. Thank you, Chair. So um, I'll just read out my first bit and then I'll read out the statement for everyone. So um, BEES, which stands for Burnham's Excellent Entertainment Society, is Appendix E. They're an established amateur musical theatre group for children, young people and adults in the local area. This group is open, open to all and you're not required to audition to become a member. This group has not only been entertaining audiences for over 20 years, but I've also seen their members grow in confidence, self-esteem and their musical performance skills over time. They normally produce two shows a year and have previously taken part in the Carnival, Hybrid Festival, Christmas Light Switch On and Carol Singing at the Princess Christmas Fair. So um, as the chair explained um, before the meeting, I did receive a statement which they would like me to read. <clears throat> Sorry. Good afternoon. I'm sorry we can't be with you at the meeting this afternoon. Bees has been running in Burnham for over 20 years now. Um, they usually produce two musical theatre shows each year, often one performed by junior members in the summer and a bigger show in the winter with adults and children. Anyone can join and you don't have to pass an audition to be a member. We also take part in the community events such as Carnival, Youth Parade, Hybrid Festival of the Arts and we've sung at the Christmas Switch On for example. Over the years we've seen many of our junior members flourish and grow in confidence and self-esteem as they continue with us. Adult members have also developed their skills and improvement and their well-being too. We are pleased and excited we can now look at putting on a show again and our upcoming show is Alice in November. 
However, we haven't had, we haven't really appreciated the impact the pandemic has had on this organisation. We've had less income due to subscriptions being paused and obviously no ticket sales. And although the pandemic has stopped our shows, it hasn't stopped our junior cast from getting taller. So we're having extra costs because they would have grown out of their costume <laughs> costumes. Previously, we have shared some of the makeup between members, but in order to ensure COVID safety, we are needing to buy entire kits for each cast member. 21 in Alice. A further additional cost is that we will need to hire more radio mics for the new show. Again, we can't share amongst the cast and also we don't want to encourage our members to shout in their performance as that's more risky with COVID. These are all extra costs on top of the usual production costs. We have been fortunate in receiving some funding from Burnham and Highbridge Town Council. If this committee is able to consider some funding too, that would be really appreciated. Thank you for listening. B's committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you can see the list of um, costs here. They're only asking for really a very modest amount, £960. So after listening to the statement, members, do you have any further queries? Um, thank you, Charlie. I don't have a query, but I'd really like to support this and, and propose we fund it. Um, this this type of society, I, I know from what we have in Western Supermare with um, the uh, the um, Amateur Operatic Society and also the World Society, they've been really badly hit with COVID, not being able to put on shows. And I think what's also um, we should bear in mind that um, looking at the website of bees, you know, when, when people are involved in this, they do pay quite a lot of their own money in terms of subscriptions to be able to be part of it and to perform. And, and I really think this is um, we should support them and also support the community in Burnham. So I, I, prop I propose we go ahead with this. Thank you. Um, Julie, your hand was up next. Yeah, I totally agree with Charlie. I think this is a, a really good application and, you know, a, a really good one to support. Your sound has gone off again. Nope. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I just think it's a really, really good uh, grant to support, you know, for young people to get together, um, you know, and produce a play. So, yeah, I'd like to second it. Thank you. Uh, Graham, you had your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I, I couldn't agree more with Charlie and Julie, actually. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it is a fantastic project and it's just the sort of thing that Burnham needs. My, my, my question was to Shannon, though. They, they, they are not requesting much money. They could request more. So I'm interested to know i might just be missing something from the report here but it's only 960 pounds do okay. you know why? i can explain that i was a i was about to put my hand up and explain um so unfortunately i was off um the week before the application got submitted again i completely take responsibility responsibility for that and passed it over to rob who um Obviously, I was waiting for a few emails back from some of the applicants because um, some of the project costs had changed. So in one of the emails that I received from um, the applicant themselves, they had put in there that the lowest, the minimum cost they would be appreciated to have would be £960. Oh. However, Rob put in the lowest cost when they did say they would have liked to apply for £1,688, I think it was, because they changed it because they had a higher figure. But when they had been awarded from the Burnham and Highbridge Town Council, they wasn't sure if they could apply for X amount still, as it, they didn't want it to overrun. So that's why um, the, yeah, the cost is lower. Thank you. Well, we can only, on that one. Well, whatever our instinct, uh, we can only work on the figures that we have been given, just £960. Um, if there are no further questions, now that has been proposed by Charlie, seconded by Julie. Uh, may I have a show of hands to Hi. agree? Sorry, Brian, did you want to say something before we voted? Yeah, if I could, as it's an administrative error, is that not something which we can um 
uh, obviously we'll have to speak legal but is that not something that we can address yeah. here i don't think yeah, we can address that here um well, where are you there's an echo yeah sorry i, I didn't the, the, know if that oh, was okay yeah so go if you're near the outside part Dorothy, are you speaking? No, no Councillor Keane, it was Councillor Cordner. She's got her phone on because she's got no sound from her Teams meeting. So I've just, <laughs> I've oh, just well, muted her. So I'm not sure whether she'll be able to get herself back on off mute. <laughs> she'll have to type into chat or something. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy, you wanted to add something. Yes, I was going to suggest that if you are minded to um, perhaps increase the value of the grant, then the best, the better way to do it is to defer the application for further information and clarification and it come back to committee with more up to date figures because you can't just amend the figures now um, on the basis of a published report. That might be the better way forward. The, the issue is, I suppose, can they wait until the next round yeah. of grants committee for the funding? Uh, Shannon, will you, you know the background and the contacts of the applicant. Um, do you know if they could uh, wait for those extra weeks? I want to, I would like to say yes, Let's but I also, I, yeah, I also wouldn't want to push that I mean again it on a clerical error technically yes it is obviously my fault we um <laughs> it could have been pushed in that the higher amount could have been brought forward instead of putting the minimum amount of the figure that was put in um but again I would completely put that on you guys in terms of what you would like to do obviously if you'd like to give them the full amount I think again they'd be happy to get more than what they would if we had accepted it today, but that's, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Thank you, but the problem is, this is this 960 has been proposed and seconded. Therefore, if there is to be any change, I would ask the proposer and seconder, would they withdraw that? And we pass to the next item, and in the meantime, would you telephone your contact at B's? Yeah. Could the, um, Dorothy, can that be done within uh, our framework? You can defer. I was going to say another solution could be to award part of the 960 now and defer the balance for further information. Um, just another alternative. But yes, both of those options are available to it. To, to you, sorry, to it, to you. Uh, Graham, do you have a view? It, it, it is. I'm afraid it's just continuing this point of order, really, which is, is it possible to uh, award the 960 as proposed and seconded, but uh, given we have had a clerical error on this one, um, allow a second application in the ne at the next meeting, should they need more money? So they've got the 960 shortly, but they can come back and, uh, and request more at the next meeting. Is that I know we have we're not, not usually allowed to do that, but because it's a clerical error uh, and there may be a timeliness aspect to this, are we allowed to um, do that this time around? We need legal advice on that. No, <laughs> but what you could do is give them 900 and defer the balance for further information. So you can give them an amount, hold back a little, defer to the next meeting. Leila, you, you, um, your hand is up. Um, I don't think you can defer completely because the next meeting is not until December and that is after their project is due to take place. Exactly. That's, that's the first bit. Second bit, agree with what Dorothy is saying, award the grant of 960 on... Why aren't you? I thought that's what you just said. 
No, I was saying give them as close to 960 if you like. So if you wanted, you could give them 940 or 900. But give, give them as close as you can get to that 960 and defer for approval of the balance. It does mean at the December meeting, you might give them an extra 20 quid if it was 940 you were giving them now. But it opens the door for further investigation and information to be obtained. What, sorry, what about if I have that extra information already? Have you got it? Can you produce it now? I've got I've got an email that was sent to me, yes, that I could show you guys to to prove why the balance they need more of a balance, if that makes sense. Because the total project is higher. In which case, in order to be absolutely clear, would Charlie and Julie withdraw their proposal and second at this stage? and perhaps resubmit it after they've heard what you have to say. Yes, yes, I'm happy to do that, provided we make a decision because their performance is on the 27th of November. I've just looked online. Yes, I agree. Thank you. And Julie, are you happy? To put, that? put your thumb up. <laughs> OK, right. Shannon, could you disclose what you've now received? So I had an email that says, Thank you for your understanding of this. The new figure for the radio mic hire of the show will be between £432 to £510. Two quotes from two different companies. The cost for the new costume is listed in the Alice budget, a further £450, which is on top of the non-recoverable costumes of £728. Sorry, my apologies. So I think this means that in effect we're adding... £452 to £510 to the total project costs of £5,673.45, taking the highest figure. That gives us a new cost of £6,183.45, I believe. So ideally, we would be looking for a minimum of £960 to cover the new costs or £1,688 if we were also allowed to include the cost of previously made costumes. Hope to hear from you soon for clarification. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Thank you. Leila? A tricky one. Leila, your hand is up. Mm, I that was well, I'm, I'm thinking, councillor. Um, <laughs> I... What was the date of the email, Sharon? Can't hear. Tell me, tell me again. The 21st of the 9th, but I wasn't in. I don't. Uh, three weeks ago. So that was before the deadline. Was that before the deadline? That was before oh. the deadline. I think Dorothy might want to say something now. Dorothy, well, please. I think the way forward is that there is nothing for to stop officers from presenting further information on the hearing of a particular application. And I think that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So on the basis of that further information, members may make a decision. Uh, Graham, you, you, your hand is up. Yeah, it, it, I mean, given that we are given that we are a subcommittee of executive, can I suggest we we give them do, we sort of do, do 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 what Dorothy's suggesting, which is which is grant them nine hundred and forty pounds, um, but then recommend to the executive that the balance, which would be uh, seven hundred and forty eight pounds, is 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 granted. Should the leader consider consider that the right approach? I suppose it's just one way of doing it, but it seems a bit roundabout. As as this extra information was submitted in writing before the deadline, and it's still not a huge amount of money, the, the total would be 1,688. Charlie, you have... Yeah, I'm, I, I'm now satisfied that we re have received all the up-to-date information, that it is within the deadline and that it is within the criteria, and therefore I propose that we award 1,688. Thank um, you. 
Uh, Julie, you seconded before. Will you second again? Thank you. Um, if there are no further queries, oh, Graham, yes. Uh, only to say that I wasn't aware that was possible and that's the, it's fantastic that it is. So I'm happy to support. Thank you very much. So this has been formally proposed 1,688 by Charlie, seconded by Julie. Will members please show of hands if they agree? That is unanimous. Thank you all very much indeed. And our last application this afternoon is the Monarchs Acrobatic Society with of international fame. Uh, there's no speaker for this. So, Shannon, could you present the detail, please? The last appendix is Appendix F, Monarch Sports Acrobatics Club. They have a gymnastics class for mums and toddlers right through to a light elite performance performers so sorry this club currently has 340 members nine adults and 331 children they unfortunately have very old lighting at the gym and they need to replace the bulbs as a few don't work and a few are going and are causing power cuts this results in long waits for them to come back which obviously is having a, a an impact on the club itself this club would like to reply replace them with new LED lighting, which will not only make it safer, but also improve the condition of the gym, ensuring that they continue with the classes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't need to remind you all that um, LED lighting, of course, is more climate friendly. So that's uh, not only health and safety, but climate friendly. Members, do you have any questions on the detail of this? The monarchs are no strangers to you. In which case, may I have a proposer that their request of £1,035 be granted? Julie, your hand was up first. You're proposing. Graham, your hand was up. I'm seconding. Thank you. Um, everyone seems is content with the detail. Formally um, proposed by Julie, seconded by Graham. Please show of hands those who agree. Thank you. That again, unanimous uh, for £1,035. That concludes the, uh, the normal grant requests. The next is simply for noting it's the RTL2 funding, which is a, an additional appendix, and there are over several pages. Are there any questions that you would like or clarification on the detail of these tables? Goes by parish. Seems quite a lot of money hanging about. It did occur to me that since there is now a limited life of this council and there's very little information about these what other people would consider minor details, and it is a lot of money. Uh, perhaps we ought to encourage all our village halls and other people who qualify for this to get a project together ASAP, because I would hate this to disappear into a unitary coffer. Maybe highly improper to say so, but that's the way I think. Uh, Graham. Very improper chair. <laughs> I, 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 in, certainly in, in my ward uh, where parishes don't have any, um, there, there is no scope for projects. They've managed to share funds and therefore projects with neighbouring parishes and that seems to work. That seems to work very well. So it's also worth remembering that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that, that it's not limited to this one parish where it's not possible they can they can um they can use the the money for other parishes knowing that that other parish services both yes we have a precedent for that over at redmore uh, leila chairman i'm just reminding people this is actually for play equipment and nothing else um <laughs> and what um what graham's just said is very true there are a lot of um as long as 
that particular parish gives the other person uh, or other parish permission, it's a really good way of making sure that a scheme comes forward. Thank you very much. There's that is the end of our work for today. Unless there's anything concerning what we've discussed, you Charlie. Um, just a quick one. Does Shannon have a, a running total of what we've spent and what we have left to spend this year on grants? Um, Shannon does. Unfortunately, my um, computer's playing up at the moment and I can't get into my tracker. I'm really sorry, which is obviously causing some problems but I can have I'm happy to email around the um the figure for everyone once I can get that sorted that would be useful thank you all very right. much <laughs> and if there's no further business then um, I thank you all very much for your attention and for the care that you've given to the people who really do depend on this for their projects and I close the meeting at um 15 45